So the next painting process I want to talk about is actually using Spotlight along with reference textures to actually apply texture detail from images to the surface of your model. So here I have my model just loaded in and I've actually gone through and applied different color breakup across all the different parts using that same layer masking system that we talked about in the last video. I've also currently have the skin shade 4 material applied to my model instead of the matte cap gray. This just allows you to kind of see the colors a little more natural on the surface of your model here and also still see the sculptural details. Before we actually start painting with Spotlight, I just want to come over to the layer palette over here. And you can see I still have the primary, secondary, tertiary, and rivets uh, layers still set up on the model. So I'm just going to go ahead and just bake those down. Just come down here and bake all. Now, this isn't a necessary step, but just for the actual demonstration purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and just clear those out uh, quickly. Now, next thing, I'm just going to focus on one part of the model here since I have all these individual pieces. So I'm just going to focus on this part here. So I'm just going to come and first make sure I have that part selected and then come and activate solo mode. So now that's the only part of the helmet visible on my canvas here. Now I'm going to hit comma on my keyboard to open up Lightbox, which is going to load like this. And I'm going to browse to the actual texture folder right here. Now inside this texture folder, there's an abundance of uh, textures that actually ship with ZBrush. And all these can be used for applying kind of different surfaces across the uh, model. So I'm going to come and scroll and locate one of the kind of grime textures. So this one right here, so image 4845.jpg. And I'm just going to make sure I have that highlighted and then I'm just going to double click it. And that's going to take that image right out of Lightbox and throw it right into Spotlight. So after it's loaded into Spotlight, I'm just going to hit comma to get back to uh, Spotlight here. And you're going to notice that it's taken my reference images and kind of scaled them down and then brought in this large texture reference here on top of it. So I first want to kind of move this to kind of be in the center of my canvas here. And then I'm just going to scale it down a little bit because I don't need it as big. And then I'm going to go through and just clear out these guys. So I've got my modeling stuff done and my degree of color breakup already uh, established. So I can just come through and remove these. I don't need these uh, reference images anymore. So I'm going to come down and just highlight each one of them. And then there's this delete button in the actual spotlight uh, wheel here. I'm just going to click that. So just going through and highlighting. So they have that red box around it. And then clicking delete. Just kind of clear them out of spotlight there. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to adjust the opacity of uh, this guy here. This is a little bit too strong. So I'm going to come and find the opacity area and just kind of scale that down. I want it pretty much to be just a tad bit visible on my canvas there because I'm actually going to be using it to paint from. So I don't really want to see it. I want to actually see the model underneath and um, how it's actually accepting that texture as I actually paint it across the surface. So I'm scale the opacity down. The next thing I'm going to do is just kind of rotate it because right now I'm in like a vertical fashion of these kind of wear lines. So I want to make sure they're actually kind of flowing in a horizontal direction to kind of start. So I'm going to take the rotate option here and just rotate this to the side and then just position one of the darker areas roughly in space um, on my model right about there. So after that's placed, I'm just going to hit Z on my keyboard there to just turn off that uh, Spotlight UI. And I'm going to make sure I have the standard brush selected, RGB is turned on, and turn off Z Add. And now I can come through and actually start painting on the surface of the model here. And it's going to project anything that uh, Spotlight has as a texture visible on the canvas. So if I come through and just start painting, uh, you should notice that the texture should begin to apply to your model. Now, if you do not see the texture being applied, come over to your actual brush menu here and go to samples and make sure you have spotlight projection turned on. So since we've been using spotlight to uh, use uh, images as reference, we've actually been turning the spotlight projection off. So we're not able to use spotlight in projection mode. So if you paint on your model and you're not seeing anything like this, I'm just getting that kind of straight white color and not the actual projected uh, texture effect I'm looking for. Just go to your brush menu and come down to samples and make sure you have spotlight projection turned on. So now if I come back to my canvas here and undo, and now just take my standard brush again with RGB and paint on the surface, you're going to notice it's going to take that actual spotlight image and then project those details onto the model as I stroke across the surface.
So now right now this is a little bit harsh, so it's pretty much doing 100% intensity on the actual surface there. So it's taking the exact intensity from this actual image and applying it directly to our model. So we want kind of a worn kind of wear effect across the surface, not really this kind of burnt char uh, laser effect. So I'm actually going to undo that again and I'm going to come up here to this RGB value and just turn this down to say something around 8 to 10. So I have it set at 9 right now. And now I'm going to hit uh, Shift Z to bring Spotlight back. So I'm just hitting Shift Z to turn Spotlight on and off. And now if I come in with this intensity 10 and this image on, you're going to notice it's going to actually bring in that detail, but it's going to bring it in at a very light value. And so this is going to allow you to come through and kind of refine how much kind of charred or damaged areas you want on your model and give you a little more control as you're actually painting across the surface. So now I can just come through and just Describe a little more wear areas on the surface there and then just hitting shift Z to kind of toggle it on and off to kind of see what the effect I'm kind of getting. Now if you have a flat color like we filled this in with an orange I can actually come back in and set orange to bleed out or erase areas that I may have charred too much. So I'm just going to come over and hover over the top of the model here and just hit C on my keyboard and that's going to color pick that color of the model right there. So just hitting C will color pick anything that's visible on your canvas there. So I'm just hovering over the orange. And I can come in with spotlight turned off. So I hit Shift Z to turn it off. And then come in and kind of bleed that effect out by just applying that orange paint uh, right on the surface again. And just come up and clean up any kind of overstrokes that I may have made. And so now basically you can just turn Spotlight on and rotate your model around and find different areas where you want this wear. And then when you come in and just lightly kind of brush uh, areas in on your model that you may want some wear and tear or some kind of burnt or char or dust or dirt marks on. So this is a quick way to add uh, different values of uh, detail to the actual surface. And you can see it gives a pretty convincing result. Now you can use any textures with this, so if I wanted to apply a brick texture across the surface, I could just load in a brick texture and then come through and actually start painting bricks on the uh, surface of my model here. But this is uh, not a brick wall, so I'm just going to come through and apply the actual char marks a little bit more. Now I have symmetry turned on, so you can also use it with symmetry. Uh, if you don't want symmetry turned on, just turn off X, and then you can still come in and move these items around and just kind of char up different areas like so. So it's good to hit kind of edges on your model just lightly to kind of get that kind of wear effect going. You can also adjust the actual spotlight canvas at any time. So shift Z to bring the spotlight back and then make sure you have Z on to get the actual wheel. And then come in and actually rotate this and reposition it. So if you want different char lines or different kind of char marks, if I want kind of like a, a leak stroke out of there, I can just reposition my model, reposition the actual uh, spotlight thing here and then find that detail and then just turn it on and just kind of gently come through and stroke that on uh, your model there. You can always undo if you do too much. But this is a very quick way to come through and get really cool kind of wear on the actual surface. It also gives a pretty cool effect on uh, darker areas. So this area in the back here that actually has a little bit of the dark gray color to it. You actually come through and it's going to give you kind of like a sun bleached type wear pattern on the surface there. Just lightly brushing that and give you that kind of battle worn quality to the actual helmet. So it gives a pretty good convincing result of like worn plastic. So not as clean as it was originally. So you just go through and just continue kind of painting on the surfaces there. The next thing I want to talk about quickly is uh, using another brush that works really well for adding details to your actual model for wear and tear, and that's actually the Trim Dynamic Brush. So I'm going to hit B on my keyboard, and I'm going to isolate by the letter T, and then I'm going to find the actual Trim Dynamic Brush. Now with this brush selected, um, it usually comes in with just uh, Z subtract on. So if I actually come to my model and start sculpting, it's actually going to do this kind of carve effect across the surface. Now one thing I like doing is I'll take this brush and actually turn RGB on and turn Z sub off. And then I'll set it to a kind of white color. And then I'll come through and get a small kind of brush size. And then just find like the edges of the areas 
on your model and just kind of drag across. And it's going to give you this kind of chipped kind of surface. So it's going to find those edges and kind of rough them up a little bit. Now another thing I'll do with that is I'll come and I'll take an alpha and apply it to trim dynamic as well. So I'm just clicking on the alpha palette here and I'm going to locate this alpha 58. So this kind of gives you this kind of rough line kind of effect. And now I can come in with just this trim dynamic and lower my RGB opacity down some and just come through and scrape up the edges of the model here. So this gives some interesting worn uh, metal patterns uh, occasionally. So you can come through and just kind of apply some different scratches across the surface. I usually use uh, white to kind of come through and hit highlighted areas, but you can definitely use any color. You can also apply any textures to it so you can actually open up your spotlight option again and come through and actually paint with this brush and spotlight like we did with the standard brush. But it's pretty cool for giving you know, just a little more of edge wear along surfaces of bolts, you know, rivets, things like that um, that make them on the surface of your model. Since that trim dynamic brush is using a depth masking option, you're going to see it's only going to hit those edges, which generates a uh, pretty cool effect. So that's the uh, rough kind of process for using a spotlight to kind of apply textures. You can just pull any textures in the spotlight and then paint them directly on the surface of your model which makes actually painting uh, models pretty fast so if you have you know different surfaces you want to kind of match or apply to different areas you can quickly just take a picture or uh, grab some texture reference from the net or just use the actual images that ship with side of ZBrush and just come through and start applying these to the surface of your model and so that's a good way to apply quick details and different surface variations through actual painting inside a ZBrush. So I'm going to continue battle damaging the helmet up here as we finish up uh, sculpting a helmet inside a ZBrush. Mm -hmm.